Our next presenter is Dr. Abdullah Al Masood. He will present about change of face of change of face by orthognathic surgery. Honorable Chairperson, learned audience, and distinguished guests from home and abroad. Uh, I am Dr. Abdullah Masood, working in Dhaka Dental College and Hospital as an assistant professor. Before going my presentation, I would like to thank Professor Moinjan Choudhury and Professor Jangir Kobil uh, to organize such a uh, big gathering in the history of dentistry. My today's topics about uh, change of face by orthognathic surgery. First of all, we know what is orthognathic surgery. It's an operation to reposition the jaws in a new position, which will improve the aesthetic as well as function also. So when jaws are not properly aligned, there are lots of problem. Problems with appearance, social problem, chewing problem, and biting problems, speech problems. So the candidates of uh, orthognathic surgeries are uh, maxillary anterior posterior excess or deficiency, maxillary vertical excess or deficiency, mandibular anterior posterior excess or deficiency, mandibular asymmetry, and facial asymmetry. And there are some syndromes like as Eppert syndrome, Cruzon, Gollenhar, Romberg, Perry Robin, and Binder syndromes. And the sleep apnea due to short face, these are the candidates for orthognathic surgery. Before doing orthognathic surgery, we have to know some basic proportion of the face. Here, this, if we uh, line some vertical line from the inner canthus, both inner canthus of the eye, it will go through the L of the nose. And from the outer canthus, both outer canthus, if we uh, draw a vertical line, it will, all of this uh, divided the face into five equal proportion. And face is divided by uh, three pairs, uh, mid face, upper face, and lower face. Upper face from the tracheon to the glabella, and the, from the glabella to the nasion, it's a mid face, and from nasion to the chin, it's a lower face. All should be equal. And uh, the, from the uh, prominence of the zygoma to zygoma, that is bizygomatic width, and the, from uh, gonion to gonion is a bigonial width. Bigonial width is always 30% less from the bizygomatic width. If it is equal to the zygomatic, bizygomatic width, the, in case of female, the face is, looks like manly. So it is not acceptable. And obviously, we should see the symmetry of the face. Both sides are equal and the smile line. You look, the left-handed side, the smile is pleasant, but the smile is gummy smile, another one. So this smile can be changed into like this by orthognathic surgery. And if, uh, before doing orthognathic surgery, we go for some uh, uh, radiographic analysis, as like a panoramic x-ray, cephalometric, uh, in lateral cephalometric x-ray, and anterior posterior cephalometric uh, x-ray and internal periopical view. So I would uh, give some short description about the surgical procedure. In orthognathic surgery, we do three types of osteotomy. In case of chin, we do the xenoplasty. And in case of maxilla, we do the lifted one osteotomy, basically. And uh, I would like to show some video clips of uh, lifted one osteotomy. Here, uh, you see the osteotomy is outline is done from the piriform aperture to the zygoma, and there is a step cut, and from, the, from this step to the uh, last part of the maxilla, posterior part of the maxilla. And in case of uh, bilateral sagittal split osteotomy, we give a cut just upper to the uh, lingula, and just posterior to the lingula, and then in the external oblique crease, up to uh, anteriorly up to the second molar, and then uh, a vertical cut through the body of the mandible and up to the lower border of the mandible. It's a uh, cut of this uh, here in the body of the mandible and to the external oblique crease.
to the upper part of the lingula. Now I am going to my case presentation. It's a hemifacial microsomia or golden heart syndrome. Uh, a frontal view and lateral view short of the chin and uh, chin throat angle is nearly straight. So left handed sided is the initial lateral cephalometry and right handed side is the after labeling of the orthodontically. Then from this orthodontic uh, preparation, we go for lateral cephalometry and tracing of this cephalometry. And in this cephalometry, we plan for osteotomy. There is uh, in mandible, we go for BSSO and advancement xenoplasty. And in maxilla, we go for uh, Lifford 1 osteotomy. And so RAID-1 is the virtual treatment objective. From this virtual treatment objective, uh, we go for the proper planning, how much bone we will advance or how much bone we will reduce to make a good shape. And here is the result of this surgery. It is uh, anterior posterior profile. It's a uh, pleasant profile, I think. Uh, two years after surgery. Another thing is that when jaws are very short, there is obviously a sleep disturbance due to narrowing of the posterior airway space. Here you can see that after orthognathic surgery, after maxillomandibular advancement, the posterior airway is increased and her uh, sleep disturbance totally resolved. It's another case of short mandible. This, uh, this young boy go back from the Middle East due to sleep apnea and seek treatment here. Look the shape of the uh, mandible and chin throat angle in the first one, then after the surgery. And here, you can see the uh, cephalometric tracing. The posterior airway space was previously only seven millimeter. After, by, after maxillomandibular advancement, the airway is 17 millimeter now. So totally now he's uh, free from the sleep disturbance as well as his aesthetic also changed. Uh, it's a case of uh, severe proclination with inverted uh, incompetent lip and short, uh, short uh, lower facial height. And bite is uh, totally deep bite and severe overzade. So lateral cephalometry, you can see the skeletal uh, problem here. Then after orthognathic surgery, the profile is totally changed. Now her anterior profile is very much pleasant and her uh, lower facial height and mid facial height and upper facial height is now symmetrical. It's the let, uh, uh, three-quarter view, you can see the changes. Now the lip is competent. It's about only 21 days after surgery, this picture. And if, again, we can recapitulate this picture from uh, top to bottom, the changes of this various facial profile, frontal profile, three-quarter view, and the lateral profile. It's another case of proclined uh, maxillary vertical axis and we do the Lifford 1 osteotomy for reduction or superior reposition. It's another case of uh, vertical maxillary axis and you see the competent leap after operation. It's also a vertical maxillary axis and after superior repositioning, both the orthodontics, after finishing up the orthodontic treatment, then we go for the surgery. Here, this fair lady, but when she smiles, the smile is gummy smile. We don't accept this type of gummy smile. So it is possible to make her smile by orthognathic surgery and superior reposition of the maxilla and advancement xenoplasty. Her total facial profile is changed. Here you can see the smile line before and after the picture. And the in uh, lateral profile you see before doing orthodontic treatment, middle one is after orthodontic treatment, and the last one is after orthognathic surgery. Before orthodontic treatment, look the aesthetic line 
if we draw the aesthetic line, then the lower lip is far uh, beyond the aesthetic line. And after in middle one, it also remains that. And after orthognathic surgery, now it is clear. It's another case of bimaxillary proclination with vertical maxillary axis and short chin. You can see in uh, three-quarter view and lateral profile, the profile, how the profile is changes after orthognathic surgery. Here, superior repositioning of the maxilla done by Leifert one osteotomy, as well as advancement xenoplasty was done. And you look in aesthetic line, her lip positions is now normal. It's a bite after orthognathic surgery. This girl, actually, she is from Esthenia. She comes in Bangladesh with her husband and seek treatment for his maxillary deficiency. She, has, she had class three malocclusion. The problem was that she cannot smile. Uh, after maxillary advancement, you see the lip profile changes and the bite also. It's also a class three malocclusion with maxillary deficiency. Here you can see the changes in bite. It's also a class three malocclusion and after orthognathic surgery. It's a huge maxillary hypoplasia and mandibular elongation. After Lifford one advancement and bilateral surgery split osteotomy for mandibular setback. It's a huge uh, mandibular mandibular prognathism as well as uh, mid face hypoplasia. And the frontal profile is after bilateral sagittal split osteotomy for mandibular setback and lifotone osteotomy for maxillary advancement. Here is the bite after operation. Yeah. And this is the lateral profile. You see the huge changes in this profile. First one is the facial contour angle where it is about 0.5 degree. And uh, after operation, facial contour angle is minus 12 degree. And the uh, facial profile is changes. It's another case of mandibular elongation. And after orthognathic surgery, the facial profile is totally changed and the facial contour angle is totally changed. Here the facial con contour angle after operation is minus 13 degree. And the, you see the aesthetic line is more, uh, more normal. So orthognathic surgery is not a fear, to, a fear of subject today and good planning and free flow of communication between the surgeon, orthodontist and the patients will result in good treatment. Thank you all. Thank you all for patience hearing.